In this video I'm going to give you a basic engineer task and that is calculating time fuse for initiation systems. This isn't just be used for demolitions, it can also be used for fireworks. Now the first thing you need to do when calculating time fuse is conduct a test burn. Now the procedure for doing your test burn you take your uh, roll or spool or coil of time fuse cut off six inches from the end the reason you cut off six inches is that's the location where any uh, moisture that may permeate the time fuse it'll most likely come in through the end and it'll be within that six inches at the end there so you cut that off and that gets discarded you then cut off a three foot section. You lay that section out straight, or at least as straight as you possibly can. You light one end of it, and as soon as it lights, as soon as it sparks and it starts burning, you hit the start on your stopwatch. You get the time going. And as soon as it burns out the other side, you get that fizzle coming out the end, you stop your stopwatch. Now take that total time, convert it into seconds, then divide it by three, and that gives you your time per foot, your seconds per foot. Now for this particular example we're going to use, we're going to say with our test burn, we came out to a total of 114 seconds, which came out to 38 seconds per foot. Now the average typically on US military issued safety fuse is between 30 to 45 seconds. The fastest I've seen it burn, which was in the desert, was around 32 seconds. The slowest I've seen it burn, which was in a more wet environment, wet time of year, it burned, I think it was around 46 to 48 seconds. It took a long time. Now, time fuse varies even within the same batch and that's why you do your test burn of each new roll of time fuse you get each new coil there's going to be variations from production and your time's going to vary because of the environment you're in it just happens that's why you do your test burns now the four steps for calculating your time fuse first you got to determine how much time you need so you take 60 times the number of minutes will give you the total seconds. Now if you need like 2 minutes 30 seconds, you'll get your 120 and you add your 30 on it, so you get a total of 150. You take your total seconds, divide it by the average per foot, and that'll give you the number you need for the total feet. You take 12 times it by the decimal from this calculation, and you bring it down to only 2 or 3 pay places past the decimal point. You take that decimal, you'll get your number of inches and possibly another decimal. You take 16 times it by the decimal from this one and that'll give you sixteenths of an inch. Now, with our calculation we need a total of two minutes on our initiation system. 120. We'll make it simple. So, our second step we take our total seconds, 120, divide it by the average, which was 38 seconds, and we'll end up with another number that's around 3.15. So we have three feet for our calculation. We take our decimal, times it by 12. So 12 times 0.15, we end up with around 1.8 so we get one inch we take our decimal times it by 16 so 0.8 times 16 and we end up with 12.18 at this point the decimal disappears we drop it off so we take our 12 and that's 12 sixteenths or three quarters of an inch so the total length we need for our time fuse is three feet, one and three quarters inches. And that'll equal roughly 120 seconds. 
Now, it may vary by about a second, so it could go off at 119 seconds, it could go off at 121, but it will be around that 120 second mark. We used to, uh, this was a uh, thing of pride amongst people that led uh, demolitions operations is to get it so that your time systems went off exactly when you wanted it to. Some people, and I did it a few times, we got it to go off at exactly that moment. So we're doing our countdown over the radio, five, four, three, two, one, and then right after that one, that charge went off, right on the nose. It does happen. Now I know some people are gonna say that, well, we don't need to know how to do this because they have pre-made time systems now. Yes, I'm very aware of MDI, Modern Demolition Initiators. And quite frankly, I think they're junk. I don't like them. I never did. I didn't like them when they came out. I didn't like them up to the day I retired. Okay. Can I use them? Yes. Do they have their place? Yes. We used to use them for our initiations primarily when we did command detonation. But the time systems portions of them, the uh, M14s, we were not happy with those not in the slightest mainly because the sit the amount of time they were set for was too long for us and uh, under combat operations when you're doing breaching really your time for your blast is supposed to be 30 to 60 seconds after you pop those igniters so we ended up using our own homemade initiation systems a lot more than we did MDI when it came to a timed blast. Now I suggest you take this information. If you're a militia engineer, write it in a notebook, a little pocket notebook and keep it with you. Inside that notebook you should have other information such as your demo calculations for different types of charges some of the common RE factors, relevant equivalency factors to TNT that you need to know. Stuff for different types of C4, ammonium nitrate, comp B, TNT, and so forth. Write all that information in there so you got a quick reference guide. Write in there your pace count, you know, write in there your average distances for different types of landmines and different types of minefields have all that stuff in there so you can just pull it out quick and look at it when you need it you don't have to pull out that 5-34 and look it up you already have that quick reference available this is one of those things that should be in there uh, the next video I'm gonna do is another one that should be inside that in that notebook also now for all my engineer brothers and the Patriot and militia movements Always remember, essay ons.